Well, I don't want to put too much of a jinx on it, but we're still unbeaten here at Plymouth Argyle in the season of 2026-27. Hopefully, that continues today with a big double first up top of the table clash as we take on Chelsea in the Premier League before the German champions and RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Welcome to episode number 34 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Fargo. I hope you're doing well and as I said coming up today, Chelsea and the Premier stand for Bridge across the venue. We have not lost that so far in this save and off the back of that our first European game of the save at home park and we take on the champions of Germany, a little bit surprisingly in RB Leipzig. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but in yesterday's episode we took on man city in the premier league and before then played our first european game in belgium as we took on royal Antwerp. if you missed that episode i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner since then one game in the champions league and as you can see two in the prem First up, we did take on Olympiacos away from home. To be fair, this one did look pretty winnable off the back of that 4-0 result at Royal Antwerp. And thankfully, first half goals there to Jacob Graves and Eleanor Bundo did mean we picked up a win, albeit this should have been the game where the Wayne Train did score his first goal in Europe. But in the first half, one ruled out for offside. And before then, he had a penalty save. So he kind of stuffed things up there trying to get his first European goal of his career, hopefully that will change in today's episode against RB Leipzig. But as you can see, that was a pretty fair reflection of the game of that XG, which was taken out for the penalty. You can kind of see how he did win that one too. Not enough the back of that. We then took on Sheffield United last game before a decent old break. And it did actually end up being quite a thrilling one, considering it was first versus 20th in the Premier League. As you can see, Harry Leonard caused us absolute issues in this game for the Blades. But thankfully, we did just do enough here to pick up a win, first half goals to Whitaker and to the Wayne train, but then Leonard struck twice before halftime once from the penalty spot to make it two all going in to halftime. Thankfully, Wayno picked up a double early in the second half, but then Leonard completed his hat trick. But then late on, there was a red card to Baptiste for a tackle, I believe that was at that stage on Adam Randall. And then deep in injury time, it was Randall who did score a winning goal, very similar to what he did in real life recently against Stoke City in the championship. And it was assisted by the Wayne Train. So Wayno had a very good game here against Sheffield United, our last one, for a couple of weeks. And thankfully, we did get the job done. Otherwise, that would have been some FMing. And off the back of a big old break, as I said, nearly a month since we did play that Sheffield United game between that and our clash against West Ham. At that stage, we were down in 16th on the table. Unfortunately, I potentially could have scheduled a fitness friendly Looked like we needed one because we did drop points with a one or draw. Got a goal 10 minutes shy of half time here through Nicola Iliev. But unfortunately, from the restart, Danny Namaso put one away and it was one. Or we probably quite fortunate they'd actually pick up a draw. As you can see, West Ham, more shots, more shots on target. But thankfully, we do remain unbeaten for this season here at Plymouth Argyle. So it does mean we're still right near the top of the Premier League these days, Arsenal have just snuck above us as they've won more games despite the fact they've actually suffered a loss. But first up today, it's a clash of the two unbeaten teams in the Premier League as we take on Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And ideally, we get something from this game as these guys do have a game in hand on us. And also, so far in the save, we've got a pretty good record of picking up wins at Stamford Bridge. So hopefully that will continue. And then off the back of that, we'll get stuck into the Champions League and take on the German champions, albeit currently not actually in a qualifying spot, albeit still early days, but we take on RB Leipzig these days. They are managed by Roberto Martinez. That's off the back of their previous manager having taken the German jobs. That might be something that is holding them back a little bit in this current season, but hopefully we can pick up a win there in our first game at home park in the Champions League and see if we can get anything off Chelsea at Stamford Bridge before then. Unfortunately, though, in that most recent patch, despite the fact that we did have a big old break before that West Ham game, we have suffered a lot of niggly injuries. As you're about to see, still out is Mohamed Baloumi with that broken leg that he suffered in pre-season. But as well as that, a lot of players 
who are coming back in the next little while. We've got Facundo Farias, Alex Scott, Reese Williams, Nestri Irinkunda, as well as John Buckley, all suffering slight injuries, mostly ankle injuries as well as some knees and hamstrings and calves. So a lot of injuries that we are currently dealing with, the most significant of those probably Alex Scott, but he should be back for that second game today where we do take on RB Leipzig, but it does mean quite a bit of change to our overall squad going in to this Chelsea game, but hopefully we can still do a job and stay above them on the Premier League table. We'll come back shortly and hopefully get the job done once again against Maurizio Pochettino's men at Stamford Bridge. And here are the team sheets for this top of the table Premier League clash first up. In today's episode, there are Chelsea going with a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, their form's quite good with them also being unbeaten. In terms of us, obviously, Bischoff is in there for Alex Scott, but he can make his way onto the bench. And also, Farias over Urin Kunda on the bench. But to be fair, that's pretty much our only changes from our first choice 11. And hopefully, we can pick up at least a point from this game to make our way back up top of the Premier League. And it's only taken a couple of seconds here for the first highlight free kick to Chelsea. They float that one into the mix, so thankfully we somewhat deal with that danger, albeit Shalabar with a shot, and that did of Tobias absolutely beaten that one, not too far away from making its way into the top right corner. Now Diaz tries to do something here on the counter-attack somehow, and Kunku doesn't get on the end of it. We absolutely scramble that one away. It's a chaotic start. Chelsea on the front foot, but thankfully it's still nil all. Yeah. And right off the back of that chaotic opening highlight where Chelsea had a couple of chances now, Parole has picked up a red injury. Graves will come on for him. Hopefully that's not too serious, but forced into an early sub. And quite a bit happening early in this game now. A free kick in our favour. Hopefully we can do something here as Diamonde takes his time over the ball so far. Has the best pass completion rate in the Premier League this season. Why do I speak? That is a shocking free kick. He gives it straight to Nicholas Jackson, who puts it away bottom right corner. You absolute Muppet Diamonde, and we go 1-0 down at Stamford Bridge looking for Bischoff, but not nearly enough power on it, and we go 1-0 down early off the back of a terrible free kick. And things come down off the back of that shocking opening goal that we did concede, but with 10 minutes left in the first half, a chance for us from a corner, but unfortunately Simon Son there gets his head on the end of it, but can't direct a goal, as you saw before there through the stats, we've been getting battered in this first half, actually a bit frustrating the way that we did concede the goal, considering because it was a bit of a giveaway, but now Chelsea with a chance, and Jackson will pick up a double Diaz and an orange injury, a couple of players out there for Chelsea on orange injuries, but still performing well, that's happened against us in the past too, West Ham last season, and now here Nacho, but thankfully that one does get ruled out, four offsides are still only down by one nil, there you can see Levumbo is the other player on an orange injury, but thankfully it's just one stride offside, so it remains one nil, a couple of minutes shy of half time. And just making our way now into five minutes of added time in the first half. And there is one late highlight here. A corner in our favour. Samadzic will put this one towards the far post. Simon Soma can't quite get on the end of it. But thankfully Sarawi squares that one for Jacob Graves. Off of the bench will score his second of the season. Of course coming off the back of a goal against Olympiacos in the Champions League. And that is a big one as well. Because we've been well and truly second best in this game so far. But might just sneak into the sheds locked up. At one, all Sarawi in a good place to tie this one up. And Jacob Graves, first time finish, looks like it wrong foots Lucas Perry. And that hopefully will be enough for us to go into half time locked up at one, all, albeit a highlight. After the five minutes of added time, hopefully this isn't like the last time that we took on Chelsea. But Pedro Goncalves puts that into the mixer. And they actually force a good save there out of Tobias to keep it at one, all just shy of half time. Now, Levumbo will take this corner. With that injury, might be a player who comes off at the half. We somewhat deal with it. Levumbo starts to make his way, though. Inside the box, Bischoff, though, gets a foot in there. And that will be it for the first half. As you can see, well and truly the team who are on the back foot in this game, but somehow locked up at one all at half time. Unfortunately, the Wayne train not going too well. Would be nice if we could save him up to score a goal in that RB Leipzig game. So Damian Pizarro can come on for him. We'll give the boys a bit of a rev up and hopefully find a way to kick on and pick up all three points despite the fact we're getting smashed so far. One all as we kick off the second half. And it hasn't taken too long for the first highlight in the second half there. Chelsea were on the attack, but thankfully someone down that left-hand side does get a foot and now we have a chance to make our way out from the back. Diamonde, who had that shocking free kick earlier, thankfully this time thinks better of trying to make his way out from the back and plays it forward to Tobias. Now Sarawi plays that one forward and Iliev does actually quite well there to keep hold of the ball. Now the ball finds its way to Serginho. Dears back to Diamonde. Nice ball over the top there for Pizarro. 
right on the edge of the box. Floats this one far post and picks out Nikola Ilyev, who will score his fifth goal this season. As long as he stayed on site, I'm pretty sure he did. And this would be some scoreline considering the stats so far in this game, just waiting for VAR to take its time. But thankfully, the goal has been awarded. We make it 2-1 and we can win games without Ben Wayne Pizarro picks up an assist to be fair. Wayno quite good at setting goals up despite his low ratings of late, but that is a good start to the second half. We somehow are in front here at Stamford Bridge. And only a couple of minutes off the back of that goal, which put us in front now down the other end here for a Chelsea corner. They take this one near post and Shalaba, who went quite close with, I think, the first highlight of this game, which was also from a corner this time. He puts it away with his heading to be fair Chelsea. At least deserve a point from this game based on stats so far, but unfortunately, we don't hold the lead for long. Tobias gets a touch on that, but can't quite keep it out. And it's now two all coming up to the hour mark. And in fact, just checking on player fitness off the back of that goal to Shalaber and Sarawi is down to a red heart. Bakundo Farias can come on for him. And also Miguel Gutierrez not doing too well. Diogo Spencer can come on and play at left back with half an hour left. And now locked up at two all. And only a couple of minutes off the back of those previous substitutions. Now time for our last one as Simon Soms down to a red heart and has just picked up a yellow card. Adam Randall will come on for him. And in fact, just as we do that, there is a highlight that does start a front right on the halfway line. We ping that one out to Serginho Dest, goes back to Diamonde and back out Dest down that right-hand side, makes his way forward. Unfortunately, you can't quite link up there with Samadzic. Now, Kukurella will try and get Chelsea here on the counter-attack. They're doing well to keep hold of the ball here in the midfield. That is one thing I'm a little bit worried about with the 4-2-4. Our lack of numbers in midfield might catch us out sometimes, but at the moment, it's doing a pretty good job, and Chelsea look to make their way out from the back yet again, but poor pass there, Bishop to Pizarro. He somehow keeps that, and now Samadzic with a rocket from outside the box, just curves that one into the bottom left corner and makes it 3-2 right on the 69-minute mark, and it's a very nice goal indeed to put us back in front of this one. Mateus Nunez there with a really poor pass. Somehow Pizarro kept this, and Samadzic with a very nice first-time finish, finds that bottom left corner, and we're back in front by three goals to two. Albeit very short the back of that goal, which put us back in front. Now it's a throw in here for Chelsea, albeit inside of their own half. Dezazi plays that one back to Lucas Perry. Now Shalabar starts to make his way for Caicedo up to Mudrick, but good work there from both Dest and Samadzic, the goal scorer. To get that one back for us now, Dest is on the ball, starts to make his way forward down that right-hand side. Doesn't have a lot of support, and he tries to float this one into the mix, but unfortunately, Lucas Perry this time does come out to claim it, but we're doing a pretty good job here, especially considering the first half where we got absolutely better. That late goal to Jacob Graves could prove a big difference, maker. We put pressure on them down that left-hand side, at least in terms of ours, but unfortunately, it does leave Shalaba in a bit of space there for Chelsea at left back for them. Now, Mateus Nunez this time does find a teammate, Cucurella, Makes his way forward. Nice ball there too to Nkunku, who has a bit of space to work with here. It's a really nice finish. Very similar actually to the one that Samadzic did down the other end. Good curve on that one to just get it inside of that far post. And yet again, we can't hold a lead for long here at Stamford Bridge. Free all and still just under 20 minutes left plus injury time. Could still be more goals in this one. But unfortunately, we just left a bit of space there down that left-hand side of Chelsea since we tried to press the goalkeeper. It didn't work too well, and they make it free all, albeit a highlight immediately from the restart. Hopefully, we can do something from this as we do look to keep hold of the ball. Spencer actually does quite well down that left-hand side. Now, Aliyev, edge of the box, but unfortunately, can't quite keep it. And Chelsea will get a chance here to play out from the back. You can give them some space down that left-hand side, and they take it through Cucurella. Goes up to Mudrick. He starts to make his way infield a little bit and picks out the goal scorer. And in Kunku, now they make their way into the box. He squares that one for someone. It's an absolute mess inside the box there. And then Tobias gets a touch on that. Not sure if it was actually him or a defender, but somehow Chelsea don't score there. And we keep it at free. All lots of those challenges, which look pretty dodgy in FM24. But thankfully, for some reason, don't get called as fouls. We deal with the danger from the corner. And with 15 minutes left, it's still free all. And lots of action in this game with only about 10 minutes left. There is a free kick here in our favour this time. We play it smart and Diamonde keeps the ball for us. Going forward to Samadzic and now Bishop plays that one to Ilyev. Tight space unleashes a rocket which beats Lucas Perry at his near post. 
and we are at 4-3 with only 10 minutes left plus injury time. This could be one heck of a result, despite the fact, as I said many times, we've been well and truly second best in this game, but thankfully very clinical with our chances. Ilyev from a fair way out, that is a rocket Perry, can't quite reach it, bit of tiny arm syndrome like Jordan Pickford, and it's 4-3 Plymouth with only 10 minutes left, albeit as I say that, there's a throw in here, albeit it is to us, Spencer, plays that one for to Jacob Graves, and we try and keep the ball here, hopefully Farias cuts in field, but poor touch, thankfully Bischoff though can get that one back for us, and then Spencer, bit of poor play there, we pump that one deep, looking for Pizarro, he flicks it on, but unfortunately Ilyev can't win it, and then Shabala beats the one of our players to the ball, and a chance here for Chelsea to do something down that left-hand side yet again, although good work there from Bischoff to disrupt Nkunku, we clear it, but Chelsea are back on the ball. Caicedo just beats the Farias and Mateus Nunes has the ball on the edge of the box. Back to Levumbu, who gets a little bit of space and a lot of help from the inside of the post in this game. It is just to and fro all day long. That makes it for all. And we cannot hold a lead here today at Stamford Bridge. But to be fair, a point from this game, not too bad when you look at the stats. But still, that's a couple of times now we have let them come straight back into it which is pretty frustrating, but unfortunately, for some reason, there's no one tightly marking Livimbo on that orange injury, and it's 4 all with five minutes left. And just about to make our way now into seven minutes of added time, and a late highlight here, a free kick in our favour. We take it quickly, Farias looking for Randall at the far post, looking for that late goal, just like Stoke City in real life, but unfortunately, just heads that one wide, still 4 all. As you can tell there, stats-wise, shots on target. We are keeping pretty even with Chelsea, thankfully, because everything else they have been on top of us, but we do remain undefeated here at Plymouth Argyle this season, albeit not a great result. Hopefully that injury to Parola too isn't too bad, conceding four goals, that's definitely a concern off the back of also conceding three against Sheffield United a couple of games ago in that final one prior to that big international break that we did have, but hopefully that injury is not too serious, but thankfully that draw does mean we go back on top of the Premier League, albeit not too sure how long for with some other teams having some games in hand, including Chelsea. But that was a very entertaining game, albeit a bit frustrating that we could not hold on to a lead on a couple of occasions. It's a 4 all draw at Stamford Bridge. And just coming back off the back of that game to check in on this injury to Lorenzo Parola. Unfortunately, it is a serious one, albeit one that he can play through. So it does mean he might miss a little bit of football in the next four to six weeks with a fractured lower arm, but hopefully we can put him out in some big games when we need to, because him and Diamonde have definitely shut up that defense when they have played together. But unfortunately, might not be able to do that too much over the next little while with that fractured lower arm, but hopefully he might be okay for our second game today. We'll come back shortly and take on RB Leipzig in our first home park game in the Champions League. And here are the team sheets for our first game at home park in the Champions League here at Plymouth Argyle. And thankfully, we can actually put out our best 11 for this game in terms of starting wise. And also, extended bench does mean that all our fit players can make their way onto that. Still a couple out with injury, but thankfully, the team's looking fairly strong. There's RB Leipzig. They are going with a 4 2 3 1, are the defending German champions. But hopefully, our first Champions League game at home park we can pick up at least a decent result of draw and keep ourselves inside one of those automatic qualifying spots for the round of 16. And we're just making our way past the halfway point of this first half and BP this game so far not up to much at all. Two shots to one, but eventually there is a highlight a thrown in our favour inside the final third. Dest now Som on the ball. Samadzic makes his way inside the box and he curves that one bottom left corner. Kind of similar to that Chelsea goal, albeit that one from inside the box. And thankfully first highlight we do put one away and take a 1-0 lead over the Bundesliga champions. Good little routine from this front. Some good short passing. Somehow Dest actually picks a gap there to find some Ardzic. Threads a needle into that bottom left corner. And we take a 1-0 lead here at home park. And it looks like that'll be the only highlight in the first half. Thankfully Lorenzo Parola getting through with that protective arm cast quite well. He should be able to last a full game hopefully. We can always take him off if we do grab a buffer goal. But so far our first choice 11 doing a decent job, albeit not super dominant, but the one shot on target in this game, we have put away through Samadzic, one lap at halftime, hopefully we can keep it going, kick on a little bit, and make it three wins from three in the Champions League. 
And it's only taken a few minutes of the second half, but unfortunately one of our players is now down to a red heart as the goal scorer in Samantic. So Morgan Willicke can come on for him. We'll play things safe with that 1-0 lead. And at the hour mark, we eventually get a second highlight in this game as Simon Som has just picked up a yellow card. So he'll probably come off off the back of what we get shown here, but a chance for us to do something on the counter-attack. Nicola Iliev squares that one. Lovely for the Wayne train. It's a massive chance yet again for a first European goal, but yet again he blows it. He really doesn't want to score in Europe, unfortunately, the Wayne train, but a couple of players are now down to red hearts. Obviously, Som will come off for Adam Randall, but also Mosquera can come on for Dest, and as well as that, we'll bring on Farias for Sarawi. So a few subs off the back of what should have been a chance for the Wayne train to score his first European goal, but it's still 1-0. And in fact, very short the fact of those previous subs now, Alex Scott's down to Red Hearts with our final one, Tom Bischoff, will come onto the field. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, thankfully, so far RB Leipzig yet to get a shot on target. They've had some chances, but thankfully nothing that we have seen. A good ball played for there, but unfortunately Iliev can't quite get on the end of it. And then Parola, good work to break that play up. And then again from Bischoff, so we do get the ball back here. So far RB Leipzig yet to do too much threatening that we have seen in the match ended. Now Farias makes his way down that left-hand side, puts it in for the Wayne train. Interesting header, but goes back to Whitaker, and Ilyev will put that one home. His seventh goal of the season so far. I think he's our top scorer here at Plymouth Argo for this 2026-27 season, and that's hopefully the goal to make sure we make it nine points from nine in the Champions League. Not too sure there how Wayne hasn't gone on the end of that. I think it said Auburn got there before him, but thankfully good hustle, and he does help set up that goal so Ben not scoring goals but helping set them up and we make it 2-0 with just under 15 minutes left and making our way into the dying stages of this game now it does look like we should hold on and pick up all three points albeit there is a highlight here a free kick but thankfully Parola does find Randall Whitaker now finds Mosquera off the bench in a fair bit of space down that right hand side looks to square that one doesn't find a teammate but it does come off the abutment unfortunately doesn't quite find its way into the back of net but it does mean a chance here from set piece for us. Bischoff will put that one into the mixer. We do compete for the ball, but unfortunately can't quite do anything with it. And I think that will be that highlight. Indeed it is, is make our way into the last five minutes. Thankfully, RB Leipzig have got similar shots off as us in this game, but none on target. That's been costly for them so far. Late chance for them here, but thankfully that ball has too much on it. And Tobias can claim it as we make our way into five minutes of added time. But hopefully we can just hold on here and pick up all three points. Might even be time now for us to start thinking about time wasting. Is it is Pelone on the ball here? And he picks out Timo Werner playing at left wing off of the bench, makes his way on the edge of the box. Now Perone with a shot, thankfully, good block there from us. And a chance there, not too sure who that was for, but thankfully does go over the crossbar off the back of that. We will slow down the tempo and tell our guys to be more disciplined, time waste a little bit just to make sure. RB Leipzig don't get a chance to make this one interesting late and thankfully that is the case. We pick up a win in our first game at home park in the Champions League three wins in this competition. So a very good start and so far that was definitely our toughest opposition to date. So hopefully that does mean we can make our way at the very least into the knockouts of the Champions League this season and hopefully might even be able to sneak our way straight through to the round of 16. It's been a good start. Nine points from nine off the back of that 2 0 win over RB Leipzig. So, a pretty comfortable win there, second up in today's episode. Nice, solid, clean sheet as well, which was quite nice off the back of that 4 all draw of Chelsea at Stanford Bridge to be fair. Quite happy to get anything out of that game. So, it does mean currently we are on top of the Premier League and also racking up the points in the Champions League as well as the money free wins, getting 2.4 million from each of those. And it does mean currently we're also on top of the Champions League will be our fixtures get a little bit tougher for the remainder of our games. I do think it's fair to say, as you'll see when we do come back for tomorrow's episode. But so far, things this season at Plymouth Argyll are going surprisingly well. It is fair to say, hopefully as well, we'll be able to clear up that injury list soon. And that should help us out quite a bit as well. Still missing the likes of Balumi Parola, of course, who is going to try and play through that injury. And also Aaron Kunda and Reese Williams at the moment. Hopefully, we can get by fine without those guys for a little bit longer. But that will do it for today's episode. As I said, still unbeaten off the back of that crazy draw against Chelsea and that win over RB Leipzig in the Champions League. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up.
on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well i think we'll try and kick on a little bit off the back of today's episode albeit when we do start to eventually lose some games that could make things interesting but hopefully that won't be for a little while longer because to be fair we have played some quite tough teams early stages in the prem now it looks like a good chance for us to hopefully try and pick up some good points and stay on top of the table and hopefully also go a bit deeper in the EFL Cup as we take on Fulham. And we've got next up Fenerbahce and Valencia in the Champions League to be fair. Those are two teams I'd like to think we can pick up some points against. We might not come back until December for our last episode at the end of this week. And I think we'll come back and take on Arsenal. They're currently in second just below us on that Prem table. That could yet again be a top of the table clash. And then we'll take on League 1 opposition in Monaco, also at home park. Hopefully we can pick up a win there. And that might almost be enough for us if we can continue our good form to make sure we'll make our way into the knockouts of the Champions League this season. But we'll come back for those two big games in early December. Hopefully still going fairly well in terms of our form, no doubt. We might suffer a defeat at some stage in between now and then, but you would have thought that would have happened already. Maybe we can keep it going with the 4-2-4, but until tomorrow for that Arsenal-Monaco double, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>